Right, hello guys, uh, Panda Man here, just doing uh, something a little bit different, see if I can uh, voice over this and stuff. <laughs> um, I know the intro is very vague, but anyway, basically what I'm trying to do here is a sort of little review for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I fancy give it a, giving it a go, so that's what this shall be now. But anyway, um, as you can see on player one, playing as Dan's here. Pulling off some impressive moves, I might add. Um, I've rented this game for a few days from Blockbuster, so I could like get a feel for it, rather because I, I didn't really have the money to buy it at the time, unfortunately. So I've had to rent it for a few days. I've got it for like a week. I've played it for four days so far, and um, looking now at my achievements I have got 820 game score on it within three or four days. I've pretty much played the game for about ten or so hours um, offline and maybe about five hours online. But the um, the main thing about the game is it's quite fun to play but you have to when you get on it you have to like obviously find the characters that you're good with like for me Dante was one of my best characters as I quickly picked up his movesets. Um, he's got a lot of little niggly hidden moves and stuff like this little combo I managed to work out on my own at one point but gets a nice few hits in. It's not that powerful unfortunately but anyway. Um, so the game's good. I recommend it to pretty much anybody who likes this sort of game. It's very very enjoyable but if you don't have the option of going online with it too much, I would steer clear of it as it's definitely a game that is more online geared than offline. I mean, you can complete the story mode, arcade mode even, which is what this is on its arcade gameplay on normal. Um, you can complete this with everyone, pretty much, within... 10 hours. I mean, I had it on very easy when I did it, just so I could get some of the characters I couldn't play as out of the way, like uh, She-Hulk, because I don't know why I just can't play her, and some other characters as well. Um, but the achievements are... Apparently I'm getting a bit of lag on that, unfortunately. The achievements are pretty, um, pretty easy to get, unfortunately. I was sort of expecting, a, expecting them to be really hard, considering it's a fighting game, because I'm not a brilliant fighting game person, but this game was built from the ground up for beginners, by the looks of it. And I've heard a lot about it being geared more towards new people coming into the franchise. But the achievements, which I shall talk about now a bit more, are fairly easy. There's, achieve there's an achievement which is to block a hundred times, which is very easy. Um, there's uh, another nice combo. There's an achievement to get over a hundred hits in one combo. There's basically achievements to do lot, a few, quite a lot of basic things like fast attacks, hyper combo finishes. Um, and then there's also the boostable achievements in a sense, which are the character specific ones, which are like um, Raccoon City incident to settle things between former Stars members in an Xbox Live match. All you really have to do is find a friend to play the game with and set it up so you can have the requirements for that quest fulfilled and basically just play the match through and you've got it. And you can do that for like all the ones that are in the same sort of thing. Um, so yeah, the achievements are fairly easy to get unfortunately. It's less challenging than I expected but there is some that are annoying, like complete uh, arcade on the hardest difficulty or beat every single mission pretty much and rank up a lot in the ranks matches, but ranks matches will come over time. Um, but anyway, the game itself though is very, very entertaining. You can do a lot with it if you learn your characters and learn how to use them. Um, to the best ability, then they are definitely gonna help you out in the long run. So it's 
very worth picking up, very worth looking at. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone, as I've already said. Um, trying to think of more stuff to say about the game, really. It's got a inbuilt roster of 34 characters, I think. One minute. Um, I think it has 32 when you put it in. And then you unlock another 4 after it, so I think it's got 36. I could be wrong, it might have 38, I've not really looked. And I can't bother to count them all now. I mean, I should have really um, properly got all the information on this, but oh well, never mind. Um, uh, what else is there? There's an extensive gallery that you can look at. I mean, I'm just um, commentating over this arcade gameplay. I only got, well, I only had enough time to do about five of the matches. Um, here's a nice little one. Uh, good finish here. Got over 100 hits there, so that would be an achievement. And because I've attacked about three of them, his anchor got downed as well. So, that assist didn't go too well for the AI there, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, there's an extensive gallery. There's character bios for every character you complete the story with. There, um, you can rewatch character endings after you beat the game with a certain character. You can also view models for characters, the 3D models, and have a look at all the colours on them. Um, you can see special artwork, character specific artwork, stage artwork, and there's also a sound test where you can listen to the voices in Japanese, English, uh, stage music, character specific music. So there's a lot of stuff you can have a look at, but uh, the main problem with the game in a sense, is the arcade mode, as I've said, because it gets boring after a while. But there's like 32 characters at the beginning, maybe 38 total, I'm really not sure. It might be 38 if you get the special edition with Jill and that other weird octopus creature thing, whatever it is. Um, and it's I don't know if it still counts for those two as well, but it, it should do. For every time you complete the arcade, Whichever character you land the final hit on the final boss with, that's the person who you've completed the arcade with. So, uh, if you can find a character or two characters that you're really good with, I recommend if you want to just get every character's endings to just drill through the story with one or two characters you're good with and have the third one as backup. Bring the third one in on the final boss just to do the last hit on him so he dies and stuff and then you get the story for them completed. And zero goes down here. As that would obviously save a lot of time rather than constantly making new teams of three that you can't use to be able to try and finish the game off with them because it's not um, that easy unless you're good with everybody. Um, but yeah, I can't really think of much more to say, to be honest. The video is coming closer and closer to the end. Um, what I will do is I'll give it a personal rating, actually, because that's pretty much the best thing I can really give you for the end of this. Um, personally, I would rate this game an 8. Some people would uh, agree with me, some people would disagree with me. I would rate it higher, but because my internet is so bad, um, which is not really an excuse, but because my internet is so bad, I can't really play the online much, so I can't experience it too much. But I did play the online for a good few hours the other day and got a lot of fun out of it, so it's definitely worth picking up for the online if you've got friends or if you just want to go on ranked matches. Anyway, that's all the time I've got for now, so this is Panda Man signing off.